Hi, I'm Dana and we're leaving our routine today. I haven't made notes for this video, I haven't previously planned this video, I haven't like thought it through. This is going to be a very like off the fly, very like genuine, probably quite vulnerable video. Lucas is going to sleep on my desk and he's going to roll over and knock my things off. But yeah, I wanted to talk about embarrassment today because I feel like one of the like leading things throughout my life is that I am consistently embarrassed. I get embarrassed really easily. I feel very impacted by it. I will do almost anything to avoid feeling embarrassed. And that's been a big sort of epiphany for me that I've had today. So as with a lot of things, it started in childhood because I was forced to participate in a lot of things as a kid that I didn't want to do. My parents put me onto a lot of like sports and dance and like various other things. And then there were things I did want to do. Like I really, really love performing and drama and arts and music. So I would want to like go to drama lessons and go to singing lessons and go to like various instrument classes. But I would be horrifically embarrassed if anyone could hear me practicing, if anybody was like overly aware and like bored up that I was doing these things. And I did not want to perform. Because it was one of those things where like no matter how much I rehearsed and practiced and knew that like I was doing things right, I just felt embarrassed like the entire time that I was on stage, the entire time I was performing. the Like after I came off, I just wanted to go and like bury myself in a hole because I was like, I'm humiliated by having just done that. Like that's the thing is like, I, I don't feel like I feel embarrassment a lot of the time, but because there's situations where I know that's really like the most extreme thing you'd feel, I'm like, oh, I'm embarrassed but I feel humiliated. And I'm using like big examples from childhood of being forced to like perform and do things in front of people that I knew I wouldn't be able to do particularly well. But it's carried over into adulthood in the way that like, I'm embarrassed by just existing out in the world. Like I'm embarrassed of myself for just being a person. <laughs> like everything about me, I'm like, oh. You know, and, and in some ways, it's fine, like I've done a lot, a lot of work to try to like accept myself and be kinder to myself and not have such incredibly cripplingly low self-esteem and the like. And it's it's not that like I dislike myself or like, it's not some self-hatred thing. I just make myself cringe and I feel embarrassed and I feel humiliated a lot of the time. You know, and it's things like, taking too long to put get my card back into my wallet when I've paid at a till and there's people waiting behind me and I'm like oh god I need to fucking go I'm so embarrassing I embarrass myself by just existing in the world like I, I told this story in another video I got hit by a car a little while ago I didn't I got bumped by a car that was like just beginning to reverse so it was extremely slow and like they immediately noticed and, and stopped reversing but it hit me hard enough that like it bruised my hip and I fell over and it genuinely hurt and shocked me and I was like oh fuck and I was embarrassed to have been reversed into by someone like I was on the path as well like I was stepping up onto the curb, like they were on the path reversing. It was not my fault. Like I was a person that had just been hit by a car and I was humiliated by the fact that I'd just done that and that had happened to me. I just like ran into the shop. And I realized that it's silly and I am taking steps to try and overcome it where I can. So like this year is the first year since I was maybe like 13 that I've worn shorts like regularly through the summer and shorts without tights. Because when I don't wear shorts with tights, I don't know if it's shorts, I don't know if it's the shape of my legs, I don't know if it's just what happens. But the shorts like ride up into your crotch and it's really annoying. And I, I don't just find it annoying, I find it embarrassing. I'm embarrassed by that happening to me. I'm like, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with my body? What's wrong with my clothes? Like, why is this happening? I'm humiliated by that happening. And I've decided I don't care. Like, I'm tired of being sweaty and too hot all summer and I'm gonna wear my shorts without stupid fucking tights on. And if my crotch starts fucking eating them because that's what happens, I'm gonna stop and pull it out. Fight me. But I still find it really embarrassing and I'm still like, oh my god, this is happening to me. And I will find, like, a discreet place to try and, like, reorganise myself and make things sit right. And it's the kind of thing where it's like, I've seen hundreds of different people in shorts this summer and I've seen dozens of those people having the exact same issue and I've not like thought anything of it you know like it's one of those things where you like see someone and you notice it and you carry on and it's just a thing you notice it's not embarrassing I'm not like they should be embarrassed for that and yet when it's me I'm humiliated and my face goes red and I start feeling sweaty and anxious because I'm like so fucking embarrassed by the person I am 
And this is where I want to like tie it back to being autistic a little bit because it's also the things that I did like I feel like because I don't have like the awareness I don't feel like I feel like I have a massive amount of like mental self-awareness you know I'm aware of like my red and green flags and the toxic parts of myself and the positive parts of myself like I feel like I'm extremely like self-aware on like a mental emotional level I like, can't always process my emotions, but I'm much more likely to just shove everything down. But I'm aware of that, you know? Whereas when it comes to, like, my physical body, I'm not aware of shit. Like, I I made a video a little while ago about reciprocation. I made a video about the fact that I can't fucking feel shit in my body. I don't know why I'm in the toilet. I don't know why I'm hungry. I don't know why I'm thirsty. And that extends to, like, if my clothes are out of place and someone's like, you've got your skirt tucked into your knickers, I have no idea and I'm embarrassed. And... You know, if I've got food on my face, if there's something in my teeth, if there's something in my hair, not only do I not know it's there until someone points it out, and I find that embarrassing anyway, even though I'm sure that's how most people are, but I then find it extremely embarrassing to like fix the issue, like having to like try and get a bug out my hair I can't see it, or like try and get food off my face. It's so fucking embarrassing. And I've gone back to the little examples because I don't want to talk about the big ones. Yeah, but I feel like that lack of awareness for certain areas extends to the point where like I feel like I must do so many embarrassing things that I don't realise that I just sort of adopt everything to be embarrassing and some of this is also definitely like internalised ableism and the way that like autistic people are presented to us as a society and stuff and it's getting better in that way and I'm working on it but there is also still like I know that there's a stereotype and an idea of what it is to be autistic that will pop into people's heads about me and like I've said in other videos I find it very difficult to not tell people I'm autistic because it's like it's it's what I do you know like when when you have the discussion of like what well, what do you do what's your job are you a student are you learning I'm like no I make YouTube videos and they always ask what it's about and I can't not be like it's about being autistic so like there's immediately this like perception of me and thought of me in people's heads and i find that embarrassing and i think that like not being able to perceive myself and not really understanding how other people perceive me i just assume it's all fucking embarrassing and cringeworthy and horrible and you know i i i also have like the awareness to be like i can't be that embarrassing and cringeworthy and awful and terrible because i think my friends are really cool people and I can't imagine that really cool people would continue hanging out with me if I was the way that I think I am. But also, I'm not seeing where I'm not like that, you know? And it also, like, coming back to, like, the big ones that I feel kind of bad talking about, I'm still working on not being embarrassed by some things that are just straight up me as an autistic person, you know? Like, I'm still really working on not being embarrassed by having sensory issues and needing to use little fidget toys and... You know, and like when I've gone to events and stuff, I wear my sunflower lanyard so that people like, it, it has a little card saying I'm autistic and the staff members know to like be a bit nicer to me because I get very panicky at things like that. So it, it is something, it, it's an accommodation that I require to be able to do things like that. And I feel so embarrassed to use it. And it's ridiculous because I'm the first person to like tell my friends like, use what you need, accommodate yourself however you need to do it. If you need to use a mobility aid, you use a mobility aid. If you need to use your noise cancelling headphones, if you need to wear sunglasses inside, you do whatever the fuck you need to do to accommodate to yourself and be comfortable. And it's fucking fine if anyone's got an issue with it, that's their issue, not yours. And when it comes to me, I'm like, it's cripplingly embarrassing to do that, actually. It's extremely cringeworthy, cripplingly embarrassing, and you're a weirdo. Like, the double standards that I have for myself are just a bit ridiculous, essentially. But I don't know how to, like, get rid of them and make them go away. You know, I, I just want to stop having so, so, so many times that I literally make the Tina Belcher noise, like, so many times a day after I've spoken to people, after I've, like, done something, after I've been somewhere. I literally am just like, oh. And that's, like, a little vocal stim, I suppose, that makes me feel a little bit better but not by much it just sort of, it, it, it's the thing that just sort of comes out because it's like oh you know it's just the sound of my embarrassment being released into the world and that makes me feel a little bit better but it doesn't really actually help all that much and I'm still just cripplingly embarrassed by the person that I am
you know and I know that if I was watching this video I'd be like well that's clearly bullshit because you're posting videos like you have hundreds of videos of yourself you can't be that embarrassed by yourself when you're sitting and editing all these videos and editing the thumbnails and filming the videos and putting yourself out there and it's like I started doing this because I needed somewhere to put things and relate to people and see that I wasn't a total freak so I dissociate while I edit and film not so much while I film but while I edit like none of that sinks in I am there like just listening to, for like the awkward pauses or the bits where I fucked up my words or just, like the bits that I need to edit you know like I'm not listening to the video really I'm not looking at myself I definitely don't look at myself while I edit my thumbnails that's why there's all sorts going on in the background like in order to do anything especially anything that's like permanent in the way that YouTube and TikTok and stuff are like I know they're not I could delete it all at any moment but if you know people download videos and stuff like I don't know that it would actually be like gone for sure you know I I don't know how the internet works is what we're getting at with that so maybe it'll be there forever but even though I delete it but it's a case of like if I focus on it and think about it and if I went back and watched any videos I, w I would be humiliated and I'm embarrassed every time I tell people like oh like I make YouTube videos and like online influencer content creator stuff like it so embarrasses me I find it humiliating I really hate it but that's where it also ties in with like it would be way more embarrassing if I was still going from like standard job to standard job getting constantly fucking fired or having to quit because I'm having meltdowns in work you know it'd be more embarrassing to be like nope I'm just unemployed with no side hobby which, again, it's not embarrassing to be unemployed. It happens to lots of people for lots of reasons. But when it's me, I'm like, lazy cunt. Um, is that the first time I've ever said cunt in a video? I also want to say that I used to find it very embarrassing to, like, try and do things online and, like, try and do YouTube and the like. And the older I get, the more I'm like, it's more embarrassing to not try and not be doing anything, you know? You know, and that sucks because you, my YouTube's one of the things that I, I am quite proud of, you know, it's sort of my main thing, honestly, and I'm embarrassed talking about it to people. Like, for a lot of people, it's probably one of the most interesting things about me, and I'm really embarrassed to talk about it. It's silly, but I hate it. <sighs> See, that's why I'm always tempted to be like, I hate myself, and it's like, I don't. I think I have lots of positive traits and qualities and stuff. There's just also lots of elements of myself that I'm like... I wish that I wasn't like this. I wish I didn't have this thing. I wish that I just naturally didn't behave in this way or sound like this or act like this or do this thing. And I just do. It's just part of who I am. It's probably part of being autistic or it's the internalised ableism of like, well, other people don't do this thing. And it's a lot of having to work on acceptance and self-acceptance. And it's real fucking tough. I don't, I don't like it. I don't really want to do it, you know? But I also don't want to spend my entire life being embarrassed by every fucking molecule of my existence. So we're going to have to work on something. <laughs> we're going to have to figure something out and accept some shit, you know? All that being said, obviously though, a good amount of it is the way that I've been told that I'm embarrassing and the way that I've been bullied and humiliated and, and otherwise, like, given the constant messages from family, friends, people I grew up around, partners, you know, like, the whole fucking, like, lot. Like, I was repeatedly given the messages of, like, you're annoying, you're cringy, you're this, you're that. Like, I didn't really have positive support and reinforcement until the last, like, until this year, really, most for the most part. So, obviously, that's going to affect me and leave me in a not great way. But the other side of that is that I'm, like, you were telling me that I was embarrassing and weird and awkward and whatever else because of my autistic fucking traits. Like, that was ableism. That was you... Like, not you, but, like, you know, the people doing that shit. Being shitty about me being autistic, essentially. Not everything. Like, I, I do have flaws and there's just some things about me that aren't great. But, you know, a lot of it, like, especially, like, the, the people have always been most annoyed about my special interests and how much I talk about my special interests and how much I engage in my special interests. And I'm like, I've always been like, oh, I get it, you're not into it and it's annoying to hear me talk about it and go on about this thing. But I don't think that anymore. Because, like, I've got autistic friends now that have info dumped on me, like, for extended periods of time about their special interests that I'm not interested in. And I enjoy it. Like, I like it. I'm like, I could sit there and listen to them all for longer. Because it's really nice to see my friend happy, see my friend being passionate, to hear their knowledge on something. You know, like, why the fuck would you make someone feel like they're annoying and boring and should be embarrassed with that? 
you know, and even with that being said, like, Doctor Who is my safe conversation for most people like the vast majority of British people have at some point in their life watched Doctor Who so that tends to be the thing that I bring up with people where I'm like I like you but I don't know what the fuck to talk about because I have gotten increasingly good at just being like if I don't want to talk to someone I'm leaving the conversation so if I want the conversation to continue I'm probably going to talk about Doctor Who and that's become like a sort of little like running joke thing amongst like the extended friendship group because obviously like my close friends, I do tend to know what to talk about with them. So for like the like extended friendship group, they've heard me talk about Doctor Who a lot and they've definitely mentioned it to each other because I've heard people say like, Dana really likes Doctor Who, doesn't she? And it's the kind of thing where it's like, there's the obvious thing of like, they did not sign up for like an hour long conversation about Doctor Who. And I'm aware that like, I need to get better with that and not talk about it so much and not info dump in the situations where it's maybe not the most appropriate. But they've also, gone through that and sat there and listened to me do it and you know as much as they may not have like necessarily wanted to they're still nice to me about it and rather than seeing it as like me not caring about having conversation with them which has been a big one they're like like I'm sure most autistic people have probably had it where they're like oh it's such a one-sided conversation you don't want to hear what I have to say you don't want to communicate with me you just want to hear the sound of your own voice you know and it's very very nice to have people understand that's not the case at all and like I'm trying my best to communicate and socialize you know and that feels understood it doesn't feel like it's something I have to explain or go over you know like I've had multiple things like said to me by friends or overheard from friends about the way that I info dump on Doctor Who and talk about Doctor Who a lot where it's like it's just being registered as a thing that I do, you know? Like, it's not a positive thing, but they're not registered as like a negative thing or a reason to not like me or some sort of like, like I say, me saying, me, me representing and showing that I don't want to converse with them or something. Like, they get it. And that's very nice. I don't know what my point was with that other than like, Oh, that was it. I, I've, you know, I've been made to feel like really embarrassed and childish. I've been so infantilized for having like the special interests that I have and things like that. And just for, for traits that I have and the way that I behave sometimes and the way that like, like I really struggle to speak when I get very anxious. So there's been times where I've just basically shut down and people have always seen it as me refusing to speak to someone and me being difficult and me being immature and childish and bloody bloody blah, 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 blah. You know, and it was always made to feel like it was my fault and I was doing the things to make people feel that way. And, you know, being around assholes, people aren't assholes to you. I really think that like, you know, as much as like we can work on ourselves to be better people and we can figure things out about ourselves and bring up the things that we've pushed down to actually work through them and bloody blah, blah, blah. I think one of the most like beneficial and healing things for me is just realising that most people don't hate me. You know, like, it, it's very much just like, I'm not the issue. And I've been repeatedly told throughout my entire life that I was, and that, like, if someone's telling me I'm embarrassing or if I feel embarrassed, it's because of something I did or something I said. When the reality is, a lot of the time, it's because the people around me aren't very nice and told me I was embarrassing and made me feel that way. Yeah, I think that's the end of the video. I don't think I have anything more to say there. Um, I would really love to hear what you think in regards to this if you feel these ways if, if you feel anything that relates to this video at all I, I like having the discussion i like knowing how other people feel i like having the thoughts and opinions on what i've said and like if you regularly comment you'll probably have noticed that i am starting to try and get back to more properly again i if i sit down and reply to loads of comments at once i really really enjoy it and i feel like i'm having, like getting to have lots of cool conversations and like but replying to like one at a time as they come in i found doesn't work for me because I reply to one and then get really anxious and sometimes I even delete the reply and it's a whole thing. But yeah, I'd love it if you commented. It'd be really cool if you wanted to like and subscribe because I post on Thursdays and Sundays. Um, down below I'll have links to my Instagram and TikTok and Twitter. And also if you would like to donate money towards my continued existence, you can also become a YouTube member or a Patreon subscriber, or you can donate to me over on Ko-fi. And like I say, there will be a link down below. And there's, as always, never, ever, ever any pressure to send me money or like donate beyond what, obviously you're not gonna donate beyond what you have because you don't have it. But you know, like I just, I still feel very embarrassed to have put like monetary donation options. So like, 
there's no pressure you really don't have to there's no expectation whatsoever it's just there for if anyone does want to and honestly if you're a millionaire i want to like send me a few few is there a nickname for like thousands i've never had thousands of pounds so i wouldn't know if there was but like if you're a millionaire buy me a house i mean then you wouldn't be a millionaire Unless you are. I don't know why I'm talking about this. Millionaires are not watching me. Whoever you are, wherever you are, I hope you're having a lovely morning, evening, day, afternoon, week, month, year. And I'll see you again in a couple of days.